Hey everybody, this is another FreeCAD Path tutorial video. Um, actually, it's not a tutorial video. This is kind of a run through of some recent features that are just have just gotten merged in the last few days. Uh, this is late March uh, 2017, so if you're not seeing this in your branch and it's close to that date, you may want to wait for it to become stable or rebuild if you're building from source or pull the latest uh, daily. Anyway, I'm going to run through. There's quite a bit of uh, quite a few things in here. I'm going to run through fairly fast, and uh, it also seems to be somewhat buggy. So if it crashes, well, I'll try to pick up as quick as I can. I'll switch over to FreeCAD so you can see what I'm doing. And I've got here a uh, uh, an open document that's got two sketches in it in two different bodies, and uh, I have not padded them out. Uh, at the moment, this doesn't work with uh, padded sketches, but it will in the future. Um, Instead, I'm going to be working with some arch objects. So I'm going to switch to the arch workbench. And uh, on this toolbar, you'll see that there's the, the panel tools here that has three tools underneath it. Panel, panel cut, and panel sheet. Uh, I'm going to select each of the sketches and hit panel cut. And I actually have to set, select the sketch, not the body. And the panels are created, uh, they kind of turn brown. And by default, they're padded out to a thickness of 10. And for my model, I need these to be 3 millimeters. Um, so I'm going to reset that. Okay. And uh, um, so that, now I have my panel um, objects. And with the panel objects, you can reorient them to kind of create the, an assembly. So I'm going to take this one and edit its placement. And I'm going to re rotate it 90 degrees around the y-axis. And I'm going to move it. I'm going to translate it in X and in Y. So you can see what I'm kind of doing is uh, assembling these things as though it was a um, now to see how the object would fit together. I'm not going to do this perfectly. I'm just going to do it enough so you get the idea of what I'm um, doing here. And okay, so I can apply that. And you see, I've now got uh, got my objects assembled here which is fine from a modeling point of view. But now if I wanted to cut this out of CNC, um, well, I need to build my operations and now my objects are not oriented correctly for CNC. So what we can do with this is I can select the panels and go back on that panel tool. I'm going to create a panel cut for each one of them. And you see a panel cut is a 2D projection of the object onto the XY plane, but it's it's uh, irrespective of the orientation of the part. So even though this is rotated, the projection is still flat. I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to select both of the panel cuts, and I'm going to create a panel sheet. And a sheet is, uh, if you'd imagine, it's like a like a sheet of plywood or a sheet of acrylic. Uh, so it has a width and height property for the size of the overall pro um, sheet, and then it also has a couple of other things that are interesting to us, like a like a tag. So looking at my uh, sheet, I'm going to change its height to be 400 and its width to be 400, and I'm going to give it um, a tag text that says this is panel. Uh, number one. Okay. Now everything is kind of stacked up, and by default, the panel is created centered around uh, X0, Y0. And for CNC purposes, you generally want one of the corners to be at 0, 0. So I'm going to change the panel sheet's position. So its placement and its position. And since it was 400 by 400, I'm going to move it over to 200. 200. So now my panel sheet is has this bottom left corner at 0, 0. Okay, now 
the uh, um, you see when I did that, it, it appears that I've got two copies of my cuts, and what I'm seeing is the group version and the individual version. And if I don't want to see those, I can just toggle their visibility off. Okay, so uh, now I've got my sheet and I've got my cuts, but my cuts are kind of stacked up in here. So if I uh, view from the top down and double click on the sheet, and there's a button here to edit the view positions, and I can now grab these, these little black, there's a square in the corner of each one, and I can drag these things to a new position. And I can drag my, ta my tag as well. Alright, now if I close that, this is a proper, approximately laid out correctly for CNC cutting. Um, but I would, do want to make sure of one thing. It's a current bug that will get worked out, but right now it does seem to be causing a problem. If I look at this end on, you'll see that the, 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 uh, the sheet is flat, which is what it should be. It has no depth at all. Um, the, it's very easy when you're reorienting these objects for them to get moved in Z as well. And if they have a Z height, then the whole object is not considered planar and it causes some downstream bugs. So if the thing starts acting weird, just take a look and make sure that your sheet is flat. Uh, if it's not, adjust the Z uh, placement property for the objects inside and make sure that they're all down at zero. Okay, so I've got um, my geometry set up correctly. I'm ready to go build my CNC operation, so I'm going to switch over to the path workbench. I'm going to select my panel sheet and I'm going to create a job for it. And you see that the base object is panel sheet. And if I open it up, I've got one default tool in there, but those, that's not the tool that I want to use. I'm going to delete that tool. Save this just in case. And I'm going to open up the tool library manager. Remember in the past we had two buttons here, one for the library manager and one for the tool load creator. Uh, we don't have that anymore, um, and this dialog has lost the left side target, so we just basically have the list of tools in our library. I got three tools in here that I'm going to use in this. I'm going to use an engraver, a two flute down cut, and a quarter inch drill bit. And when I select these, this button becomes enabled. For it to be enabled, I have to have a job in the uh, current document, and I have to have some tools selected. And then I can click this button, say OK and my tools are created in here and they're ready to use. That's all there is to it. Now these are copies of the tools, so if I want to change the properties of them, if I were to go back to the tool library and adjust the properties, it's not going to affect the tools here. If I want to adjust the diameter or something of one of these tools, double click on it and edit the local copy. Okay, so how am I going to process thing, this, uh, uh, this sheet? Well, the first thing I might want to do is drill the circular holes that are here. Depending on the kind of material and the tool, I might profile them out, but we'll assume that this is a drilling operation. So I'm going to select my drill bit and hit the drilling uh, operation. It opens up the task panel, and you'll see the tool co controller is already selected to the drill bit. And I can set the, uh, um, the depths and heights, and I can set the, uh, um, uh, any other properties of this uh, drilling operation right here. Then, it, but you'll see that it already identified the drillable locations and it added them and built the, uh, the path. So I'm kind of done with drilling right now. Next thing I might want to do is process these internal holes with a profile. So I'll select the profile operation. In this case, I didn't have a tool selected, and so it popped up a dialog asking me which one I want to use. I'm going to use the two flute down cut and select OK. And you see it generated a path, but it's not right. I wanted these interior holes, and instead I got the contour. Now if you scroll down, you'll see that you got some options for what this profile operates on. In this case, I don't want to do the perimeter, and instead I want to do the holes. And you'll see that the holes, it, it hasn't taken out the uh, contour yet, but it will as soon as I hit OK. 
Um, and if I wanted to, I could also process the circles and I would get the equivalent of profiling that. Now this is not a helical clear, it's just going to profile, but in the future we could add the helical as well. I'm not going to do the, pro the circles right here, I'm only going to process these uh, odd shapes interior and I'm going to say OK. You see that that goofy profile disappeared. So now I'm drilling and now I'm profiling the interior. I, last thing I'd want to do is contour it, so I can select contour. Again, select my two flute down cut and it added a uh, contour operation around, which looks good, and uh, I'm fine with that. Um, now look, and I see how my, my uh, I've got too many step downs on this. I'm gonna do this in a single pass. So I'll go back into my profile operation, and I'll set my depths down, and, uh, okay, that should be fine regenerates that. Okay, that looks pretty good. However, I would like to do be able to identify my parts after I take them off the machine. And one thing I didn't do is I didn't set a tag for each of the parts. So if I go back up to my panels, they have a tag property on them. So if I set tag on this the we'll call this one part number one. And we'll set this one to be part number two, oh, should be part number two, not part at two, which makes no sense at all. Okay, now I've got, uh, um, I've got the, the tags showing up correctly and I would want to engrave these things. So I'm going to go ahead and hit an engraving operation and select my engraver and it kind of gets hidden underneath the wires but it did correctly generate so if I just turn off my panel sheet you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So there it's engraving the, uh, uh, the, the strings for both the panel sheet as a whole and the individual parts. Okay, but my order's wrong because I shouldn't have added that yet. I want my contour to be the absolute last thing that I do. So I'm going to go in, double click into my job, scroll down, and I'm going to drag my engraving operation up. Uh, we'll do it after drilling and before profiling. Okay. All right. This looks pretty good. I'm ready to post process this. Um, I'll jump, click it back into my uh, my job, and I'm going to scroll down to post processing. And uh, in this case, I've got a uh, um, I've, I've added a, a post processor for the smoothie board. Uh, the smoothie board is uh, running my laser cutter now, and uh, um, so there's now a smoothie post processor out there. And this post processor can accept some uh, arguments, including IP address. So if I say IP address equals 192.168.1.11, which is where my laser's at, then when this post processes, it's going to write the file directly to the SD card. I can walk up to the machine, click the button, and uh, start it processing. I'm going to give it a file name of uh, testfile.abc, and I'll say OK on that. This seems to want a... Uh, I uh, recompute. So, hmm. Got some sort of error on that. I'm not sure why that's doing that, but it doesn't seem to be causing a problem. All right, like I said, there's bugs around. All right, so I'm going to post process this. I'll select the job, hit the post process button. It pops up the uh, uh, dialog to verify everything. And it wrote the file out to the uh, laser machine. And that's it. It's done. Uh, it, I'd be able to go up to the machine right now and click the button and it would uh, would cut. There's probably some things wrong with it. I don't know that I set my uh, feeds and speeds correctly. Those are set on your tool controllers. Yeah, they're not. Their horizontal and verticals are still at zero. So that would probably cause a problem. It gives you an idea of how it works. Um, like I said, there's still plenty of bugs out there. If you find them, please uh, log them on Mantis or uh, report them in a forum. 
And uh, if you like what you see, I guess that's what they say at the every end of every YouTube video. If you like what you see, please subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching.